you've heard my voice a little too much already. So um, I am going to now invite uh, my dear friend, uh, uh, Dr. Brandon Blue, uh, to come on up here. Brandon, I think we got you all mic'd up, brother. Um, by the way, as Brandon comes up, there will be time for questions uh, at the end of our first section here. And at that time, we'll have a little Q&A session together. Um, and so there'll be lots of time to, um, uh, to ask questions. We'll bring our whole panel uh, that will be speaking this morning. So, so uh, Brandon, I'm actually going to do a little switch here for my AV friends. I'm going to switch mics. And hopefully this one will work shortly. Is that working? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Nice. Because uh, I want to sit next to you. I don't want to yeah, yeah, tower yeah. down at you. Um, so um, we got a little bit of time here, uh, Brandon, and I just thought it'd be good for you. Maybe tell us a little bit just about kind of your story, going to med school, uh, uh, where you grew up, a little bit of your background. We'll talk more about myeloma later, but just tell us a little bit about uh, the man, the myth, the mystery of uh, Brandon Blue. Yeah, so, uh, so I'm originally from um, St. Petersburg, Florida, so maybe 30 minutes door to door. Uh, from where no I grew cheers up. for St. Peter's. <laughs> There's like a rivalry, St. Pete, Tampa. It's like you got to right. be from here to know about it. A little awkward. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's, all right. it's, all right. it's uh, for the one person in the back. It's fine. I appreciate it. But, uh, but that's where I grew up in high school and all those kind of things. And I uh, was fortunate enough to go to Florida State um, for for college. There you go. I appreciate it. All right. I know one more clap. Okay. There you go. It's I'm, building. I'm sure I there's some Gators it. in here that it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. But um, uh, I, um, you know, at the time when I went to high school, I was good at math and science, you know. And so my mom was like, you know what, you make good grades, good things will happen. And I was like, okay. Uh, and so uh, I didn't really know really. Can you talk to my daughters about that? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I met your daughter in yeah, New you Orleans. Did, you did. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, no, I, I really didn't know kind of where a career, just like most kind of young people, where things would kind of pan out. And so... Uh, where I live in St. Petersburg, there was literally a help wanted sign um, for a nursing home right across the street. And so when I was a senior in high school, um, I told my mom, I was like, I wanted, they used to have these things called like senior rings. Like, you know, it used to say like, you know, your class name and like it would have like your birthstone. It was like, it was like, I don't know, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. But it was like a couple hundred dollars. And mom was like, I'm not paying for that. I don't, we don't have that money. And, um, and so she was like, you need to get a job. And I was like, oh, okay. So I saw this help wanted sign, it was at a nursing home, and um, I started working in the kitchen at this nursing home, literally, across, we shared driveways, so like the driveway from my house was the driveway to turn into the nursing home. And uh, because so I was- were late for work. Ever. It, well, yeah. exactly, and, and when someone else would call off, they would literally look out the door and say, oh, Brandon's home, and then I would, uh, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, I would go, go in like doing my homework, like, you know, in the back of the kitchen. But, I, but I was always an inquisitive kid, and so I never stayed in the kitchen. I would always like be out in the nursing home, like seeing like what's happening here, and like talking to the residents of the nursing home. And I used to get a little bit in trouble sometimes because they were like, "We need you back in the kitchen." But mm -hmm. but but that kind of piqued my curiosity of like, you know, a lot of people in this nursing home, unfortunately, were very ill, you know, mm -hmm. and and it was like just hearing their stories about what led them to kind of be in a nursing home, I thought was super interesting, even at a very young age. And so, uh, but still, like I said, I thought I was gonna do computers because computers were kind of the wave and like the internet was like the cool thing at the time and like it was new and fresh. And so um, I thought that was computers. I didn't know what about computers, but I was like, but then I had a very special program where we actually got to work in computers and I was like, this is boring. You don't get to talk to anyone, and so, and so while I, you know, again, math and science was a, 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 you know something I excelled at, but I, I, I had to talk to people. Like I was too much of a social butterfly for me to sit there and type behind a screen all day, and so, so literally, someone just kind of suggested, well, why don't you uh, work in healthcare? And I was like, okay. I, I literally, I had no idea. No, no doctors or anybody else, uh, you know, kind of in my family. And so um, at Florida State, they had a program where you didn't necessarily have to know if you wanted to be a doctor because the coursework was similar if you wanted to be a doctor or you could be like a, um, like a, um, oh God, what do you call it? Like a person who works with athletes, like a um, physical therapist, yeah, physical trainer. therapist, those kind of things. Um, you know, the coursework was very similar. And so I was like, all right, well, I could do this because you could kind of branch off and you didn't have to decide. And that's basically what I did. And so I joined a program when I was in college where they basically said, all right, well, you get to, like shadow a doctor 
And I was like, okay, all right, because the only doctor I knew at the time was my like personal pediatrician that you know I had as a kid. So I just shouted another pediatrician because that was the only doctor that I knew about. And I said, oh, I could do this, you know. And and I literally saw him, you know, the relationship that he had with like, you know, typically at that time it was the parents. And I was like, all right, if I just kind of you know get good grades and kind of told me kind of how to study and some of those things. Uh, but then it was time to come to apply to medical school. I was like, I don't know anything about medical schools, like which one to apply to. And I was fortunate enough, I had a good friend named Gary. And I said, Gary, I said, all the places you apply, I'm just gonna apply to the same ones, <laughs> you know? And so I said, you do the- Love your strategies, very I, thoughtful. I, 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 I did a little not, random, but okay. <laughs> you know, it's funny how the stars align, you know? And so I was fortunate enough to attend uh, Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, and so when I went to Meharry, it was a, a, a very pleasant experience because not only did I learn um, medicine, but I learned how to be a servant, you know what I mean? And, and, and which is, I think, something that is, I think, super important. And so for me, I learned how to help not just the person's body, but also spirit and mind. And so um, I, I was fortunate enough to do really well in medical school, and I went to a um, uh, one of the kind of top premier residency programs for training, uh, which is Washington University in St. Louis. And um, that was, uh, you know, a very eye-opening experience because this is a, you know, a very elite kind of top prestigious medical program that I was doing my training in. And I was there as this kind of humble guy, like, all right, I'm ready to help the people. But like, you know, I noticed that like the people weren't necessarily at the place that I, and this was in St. Louis, which, you know, people may not know, but St. Louis has a very large minority uh, population. So that's why I was like, all right, I'm here, but they weren't coming to the place where I was. Uh, and so I also noticed that most people, because I thought I made it at that point. I was like, I'm the first doctor in my family. Like, I'm here now. I graduated medical school. But people always ask you, like, so when you're a kid, people say, oh, what do you want to do when you grow up, you know? And then you, I thought at some point those questions would stop. But then when I got to college, people were like, well, what are you going to do next? And then when you get to medical school, they're like, well, what kind of doctor? You know, and it, it just kept, like, questions. And then actually after I graduated, they were like, all right, well, what kind of doctor are you going to be? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm an internal medicine doctor. Like, I'm, I, I, I can do anything. And they're like, well, you need to specialize. And they're like, what are you going to specialize in? And I'm like, I don't know. But what I learned was I never got in trouble for talking too much when I was in my cancer rotation. So when I was in my <laughs> cardiology rotation, they, you, you, you guys are laughing, but they would time you. And they'd be like, all right, we need to go to the cath lab. This person's having a heart attack. We, we don't have time to talk to them and learn about their cat and their dog. We got to take them to this procedure. So I was like, OK, all right. Cross that out, you know. Um, you know, when it was, I was on my kidney rotation. They were like, "Hey, this person needs emergent dialysis. You know, we need to do this procedure." Like, you know, and and so I was like, "All right, not doing that," you know. And and even you know, when I did my ICU rotations, the patients were like sleeping with tubes in their mouth, and I was like, I, "They can't even talk back to me," you know. And so it, it it became very obvious to me that I was like, "All right, I got to do oncology because." You know, I literally, I never got, you know, in, I got a lot of trouble but for talking yeah. and running my mouth. But, but, but I never got in trouble. We're for enjoying just, this now. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to stop you at this yeah, point. For, for, for spending time, you know. Uh, and, and, so, and so then I make it even further because, again, I finished residency. I decided, all right, I'm going to be a cancer doctor. So then I get to fellowship and people are like, well, what are you going to specialize in? What type of cancer? And I'm just like, when does it stop? You know? And so I'm going through seeing the different types of cancer um, that, you know, I could potentially specialize in. And then I found out that there was this cancer that affects minorities. And I was like, oh, well, you know, unfortunately, we're in last place in a lot of different diseases, you know, heart disease, diabetes, you know. But because I said, well, this is something I never even heard of. And I had, again, gone through these schools and I was at these top places. And I was like, I, I, was like, I wasn't very familiar or comfortable with myeloma. And so what I said was, again, I was in St. Louis at the time. And so I was like, I, I have to figure out a way to help the people back home, you know, because I was like, you know, we're talking about this here in St. Louis, but I was like, I'm from Tampa Bay. Like, we, we got to bring this there. And so one of the big things that um, I learned about when I was doing my uh, fellowship was something called stem cell transplant and uh, CAR-T. And I knew that Moffitt was there. I actually got a chance to um, 
potentially come to Moffitt earlier in some of my training, but as people may not know, you're very busy doing fellowship and residency and those kind of things. And my parents didn't quite understand that. They were like telling me to like pick my cousins up from like school and like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm busy. Like I can't like, you know, be that extra, you know, kind of really like, well, you, you know, your little cousin's having a fever. They need to kind of, I was like, I can't be that person. So, so, so I, but I got the chance to, to come to Moffitt to learn more about CAR T and transplant because I saw that as good of therapies that they were, it wasn't necessarily the people who needed them the most who were getting them, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, you know, at the time, you know, Moffitt has did like literally the first CAR T for lymphoma, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that was a big deal, you know? And so I was like, all right, well, this is the place that I need to be. And it's literally, literally 30 minutes door to door from where I grew up. And so I came to Moffitt as a trainee to do this extra extended education to say, all right, you know, this is going to be my area of expertise. Not only do I, you know, focus on multiple myeloma, but now I have extra training in some of the therapies that can actually help benefit them as well. And so um, I was fortunate enough, uh, maybe Dr. Shane has something to do with this, I don't know, but the doors lined up for don't me to actually, him that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to actually stay on as a faculty member and, as, and get a job here even after the training was complete. And so since that time, you know, I've really kind of made that my mission to kind of say, all right, you know, I'm literally someone who, you know, is from this area, um, someone who um, treats a disease that is affecting people that a lot of people that literally live five minutes from Moffitt don't know about. And so I'm trying to, you know, use whatever voice I have to, you know, kind of make sure that the people that needed the most benefit from it. What do you say to that? <laughs> Uh, suffice to say, we've heard your voice today, man. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, on, on a personal, on a professional level, I just I'm so thankful for you, for your mission, for your commitment. Uh, we're obviously get to hear uh, more from you a little bit later, but I just really want to thank you for sharing that with us. And um, uh, that that servant attitude that you talk about, I know you enough to know. And for those of you who know Brandon, it's not just what he talks about; it's it's genuinely what he does. So, yeah. thank you, my friend. No, thank you all.